Welcome back everybody, this is always back with another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about HTTP client in WebStorm Code Editor. This HTTP client is available in all premium JetBrains IDEs. Let me take you to JetBrains website and here we got tools like CLine, Goland, IntelliJ, PHP, Storm, PyCharm. Currently I'm using PyCharm to demonstrate how this HTTP client works. This HTTP client will help you to test your API. The benefit of using this over some other alternative programs like I'm going to open Postman, which is a very popular JavaScript client, which is used to test APIs. This is good, but if you're writing a code in your IDE and what if you could, you know, test your API right being in your IDE. So it just saves you time, makes your development faster as well. We're going to be learning how do we do that. Let me take you to PyCharm. Here is HTTP extension for this create a user file and then request.http. I'm reading Django to build this API, mainly Django REST framework. And what if I want to test my own code? I will have to go to Postman or probably go to Angular code for the front end side to test it. Instead of doing all that, I would like to use this IDE, probably have a file like this one, and then just wanna click on this play button to test my API. Let me just go and show you how this works. I'm gonna open up a view here. Let me open it up on the right side. And I've got this uh, API endpoint called check server, which hits this function. Let me do a breakpoint here and then breakpoint here as well. Click on this debug to start the server. Okay, our server is running. I can see I have this local host running on column 8000 and I've got these endpoints. Let me take you back to the code. I'm gonna click on this play button. Click on run with local. This is the configuration that I'm going to talk about in a second. But I'm going to click on that and there you go. It hits this breakpoint. Now I can see the debugger opening as well. Let me just make a bit of space here, guys. And I'm going to click on this resume program button. It goes to the next breakpoint. I can see the date and the message. Click on this resume program. Once I click on that, it returns the response. So it's basically my own response. Yours might be different. But what we're going to take out from this is that we can test our APIs right being in the code within PyCharm or WebStorm if you have some external APIs. There is a syntax that you need to follow to write API requests. Here you can see I'm using this get keyword which basically tells HTTP client in PyCharm that I'm going to try making this get request. Next, I've got this uh, variable, which is like a placeholder for coming from my configuration file. And then just a normal string, which is like an endpoint for my APR. The host is set as, uh, as a binded to my this uh, File, which is like a configuration file. Let me go to, let me take you to file. It's here. Right, this is the one http client.env.json file. And here I list out two environments. I've got this broad environment, which has an endpoint. And then I've got this local as well. Whenever I go to request after saving this file, probably need to move this right after that. Save this file, go back to request. I'm gonna click on this play button. I can see I wanna make IPA call using local server or production server. So you can do some, you know, you can do some stuff here as well, like having a variable which has your configure. Okay, so let's talk about what can you do within HTTP client. Similarly, we have a Postman. Let me open it up. It offers features like, you know, JavaScript stuff. 
that you can run after your response comes back. You can do some environment variables. You can have a pre-script and a test as well. There's a documentation available for Postman. Same kind of things you can do right in your HTTP client file. Let me just close this view file. Before I do that, let me uncheck these breakpoints. Now here's some information about your HTTP request, content type, connection. And then after that, you start with this greater than sign with this curly braces and percentage sign. Within this, this code will be run after your request comes back or be successful. We have some test function on the client object and then assert, which basically can let you run some logic, which basically tells you if you are successful or not by checking the status here. Let me take you to the documentation and let me read this. I try to read from a documentation so you know where I'm learning and you can explore more later on. So it supports for HTTP files would be .http or .rest files. How do we create request files? So basically, let me read from here. You can work with HTTP requests either from a scratch files or a physical files of the HTTP request type. Scratch files can be used to test requests during development. As you can see, this is very helpful. Scratch files are not stored inside a project. WebStorm can modify them and add additional information about the request. So this is like a scratch file here. How do we create a request? So let me go to the composing HTTP request. Here you can say you can write this get request right here, or it's telling me to speed up the composition you can click on add request short link. Let me take you to the IDE and here I can see I've got some shortcuts here. So add request. I want to do a get request, a post request. Also, there are a few other options as well, like convert from the URL. I'm going to click on this add a request. I will say it's going to be a get request. And it automatically adds this to my, you know, scratch file and I can modify the endpoint and then it says accept application JSON. You can modify this later on, but to speed up, you can do this uh, add request. Let's go back to the documentation and here I'm going to go down. I want to talk about some using a variable. So when composing HTTP requests, you can parameterize its element by using a variables. The syntax that you need to use is double curly braces and then the name of the variable. You have a dynamic variables. So dynamic variables generates a value each time you run a request. For example, if you run a request like this and you want to pass in a dynamic variable within your parameter, sorry, within your endpoint, then you can do this. Okay, with double curly braces and you can pass in a dynamic variable. We have already seen environment variables. So environment variables let you store a set of environment definition in store uh, inside your project, like host here. To show you the demo, I'm going to take you back to the Python, and here you can see the host. So basically, it's coming from this HTTP dash client dot env dot json file. So here I've got localhost, and then I've got this production host. Okay, if I click on this get a request play button, I can see two things run with the local environment or run with the production environment. So if I click on a local environment, the host will be used from this local object. Okay, you can add more configuration here. Let me get back to the documentation. And here it talks about how you can create environment variables. So as you can see, I've created this HTTP dash client.env.json file, basically a regular file that contains common variables, or you can name that as rest dash client.env.json file. Talks about adding some more configuration for that file. 
So here you can read about it. The syntax is pretty much simple. We're gonna go to the using a response handler. This is the main thing. So once you make an HTTP call by providing the endpoint and you're gonna define some configuration here for your header if you really need to, then you do that this way. So you type the header type and then the value for that. Talk about response handler. So the way the response handler work in this one is by adding this greater than sign, curly brace and a percentage sign. And it ends with percentage and curly brace. Within this, you can write a code. It's a plain JavaScript code. You got point object and you got response object. I'm gonna take you back to the documentation. I'm gonna go down. And here, the same syntax is shown here. I'm gonna read this. Response handle script can include a test, which can let you use HTTP client as a testing framework, which is really, really great. To invoke a test, we simply call a client object and call a method on it a test, which takes two things, a test name and then a function. We have test.assert, you can assert a condition by invoking client.assert method, which takes a condition and a message. If it fails, then that the message that will be appearing in our test result. Let's go take a look at the demo for this. So here I've got this client test request executed successfully. So I'm just gonna change the name of this to server is live. Or we can say check server, save the file, and I'm going to click on this play button and click on run with local. Once I create a request, the response comes back. I can click on this response handler. It says the output for your response handler script will be shown here. But I don't have any output from the response handler, but I have client.assert, which basically can show us if the test passed or not. So I'm gonna click on this test, and here it says test pass one of test 13 millisecond. Click on this one, and you can see the test results there. Now the server is returning a status as 200. If I just say, can you go and check for the same HTTP request and check the status should be 201. I'm gonna save this and let's run this again. And this time I'm gonna to go to text and it says response status is not 200. That's the message that I can see here. And test is failed because we tried to get response status as 200 and the response status was returned was 200. Sorry, we tried to check if it's 201, but the response status was 200. So here we have a response code here. Okay, that's what getting returned here. We got this test and the test assert, which checks the condition against the response. Let's go back to the documentation. And here, if you wanna explore more, here's the documentation for that. We can open a request in the browser as well. So if we have this URL here, I can click on this or I can press Control, click or press F12. Press F12, it says cannot find the declaration. That's fine because I'm using this variable there. So let's go to my request.http file. I'm gonna hover over, control click. And it's actually going to open that in the browser. And I can see that here. That's the uh that's the request that's been opened in the browser. So you can see you can you know run your request in the browser as well. Let me minimize the browser. So that's a get request. What about the post request if you need to send some data to your backend API? Here I've got this login request which requires email and password. So the way you send that data is by using this curly brace and then pushing that JSON within these curly braces. It takes a plain JSON. We go back to documentation. And here, 
it's got some you know ui configuration that you can set up for example if i run this request okay you will notice in the run its name is request hash 2 so for example if i close these files and i want to run that request when you run the request it will automatically add that to the configuration here we can click on that and we can see the list of all the requests which were sent using your http client i'm going to click on edit configuration and just to show you i'm going to delete all of them okay let's apply click ok let's open up that http request and i'm going to click on display button and run with local once i run that it gets stored here and there you go that's the request here the next time if uh, even if i'm not on the file i can simply click on display button after that's selected and then that request will be uh, will be sent so here you can see that's request hash 2 you can rename that if you want to by going to that configuration and just change the request to name to whatever you like it okay so whenever you create a request, for example, I'm going to do a login request. And now it says unable to log in with the provider credentials because the user is not signed in. So I've got this create user and I'm going to run this one that should return a response. And now what I'm going to show you here is I'm storing uh, a user credentials on the login. So I'm going to click on this play button and run this. Now we've got the token. And I've got this user ID. Now pay attention to this code here. Okay, so what is happening here? So now I've got this client.test, and the test is login request executed successfully. And here's a callback function. And then I'm using this plain JavaScript. I'm checking if the response status is equal to 200, then run this bit of code. What this code is doing is it's using client object and calling dot global dot set auth token and then I'm using this response object to get the auth token from our response and storing that as auth token. And global dot set function will basically store this response auth token to this variable. And after that, I would be able to use this auth underscore token variable. Okay. Next, we have some requests here, which require some authentication or token. So I'm going to go down here and it says, get all the requests, but this will require a token in the Django. So now once I've logged in, I've stored that auth token to my global environment. By using set method, I can use that auth token variable. So I can click on this, run it. Now it returns empty, but it actually succeeded because the response code is 200. And if it wasn't 200, then this message would be shown in our test because test is been passed because the token was there. Okay. Now, th this is a plain JavaScript. The takeaway from this video is you got the client object and you got the response object. Client has this global, which can be used to set your variables. And then response is to check the response. So it has a status and a body, which is the data coming back from your API and the status of that response. Further than um, this, you can explore more onto this documentation i'll drop this link in the description of this video guys now if you are using webstorm or any intellij product this is the best way to write your testing framework or your http request because you don't really need to switch an application being that in a file you can just run these http calls very very easily as sometimes while development, you need some sort of testing framework or testing facility that you could use to test your APIs quickly and easily. And this is one of the best way to do it when using any JetBrains premium product. Cool. Uh, that's about it for this video. Subscribe to the channel and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.